actress Nanette Fabre, known for her significant work in film and television, made a lasting impression on the entertainment industry. One standout role that defined her career was insert title of defining work, e.g., one of her many memorable roles. With her talent and ability to play various roles, she captured audiences' attention and received praise throughout her career. As we remember Nanette Fabre, many hold fond memories of her performances and the influence she had on their lives. Share your stories and memories in the comments below. Stay tuned for more interesting facts about her incredible journey. Nanette Fabre, an actress from her time, made a big difference in the film industry. She influenced Hollywood in many ways, not just through acting, but also by breaking barriers and helping others. Her roles showed she could play many different characters well. People respected and liked her because of this. Besides acting, Fabre also worked to help important social issues. She used her fame to make people aware of these issues. This inspired others to do the same, making her remembered even now. In conclusion, Nanette Fabre's influence on Hollywood was strong and continues today. She showed her talent and helped others, leaving a lasting impact. Actress Nanette Fabre attended Los Angeles Junior College. During the filming of Harper Valley PTA, she was seriously injured by a runaway elephant. In the bandwagon, she portrayed Lily Martin. In the DVD bonus features, she mentioned a difficult experience working with Oscar Levant. Whenever something went wrong or a mistake happened, he would blame whoever was nearby, often her. After a particular incident where he blamed her again, she lost her temper and confronted him using unladylike language. This confrontation led to improved dynamics on set as he became easier to work with. The atmosphere shifted and tensions eased, making the filming process much smoother for everyone involved. Such confrontations, though challenging, often prove necessary in the world of creative collaboration. And in this instance, it significantly contributed to a more harmonious working environment, fostering better performances and enhancing the final product. Such anecdotes shed light on the complexities of behind-the-scenes interactions in the entertainment industry. And in the case of Nanette Fabre, her assertiveness reshaped the dynamics on set for the better, leaving a lasting impression on the production. Indeed, it's a sign of her resilience and determination to ensure a conducive working atmosphere. Through her actions, she not only stood up for herself, but also paved the way for smoother collaborations. Such insights into the human dynamics behind the scenes offer a fascinating glimpse into the intricacies of filmmaking. Nanette Fabre's experience serves as a reminder that challenges are inevitable, but how they're addressed can ultimately shape the outcome. Nanette Fabre, a well-known actress, faced challenges early in life due to a condition called autosclerosis, causing progressive deafness. Despite struggling academically as a child, she persevered and found success on Broadway. Born to Louisiana natives, her mother was of Irish descent and her father hailed from French ancestry. She overcame her hearing impairment through multiple surgeries. Notably, she was honored as a member of the Delta Zeta Sorority's Roman 11 Omicron chapter. Fabre's achievements reflect her determination and talent in the entertainment industry, making her a notable figure in the field. In an effort to challenge the negative stance of us TV networks towards sign language, Nanette Fabre once defied CBS's explicit directive. During a live television broadcast, she sang over the rainbow while simultaneously signing the lyrics, a move forbidden by the network. Later in her career, she took on the role of Grandma Catherine Romano in the television series One Day at a Time. Notably, this show featured several familiar faces, including Joseph Campanella, Richard Masser, and Mackenzie Phillips, who, like Nanette Fabre, also appeared in both One Day at a Time and Mary Tyler Moore. Adding a familial touch to her on-screen appearances, Nanette Fabre shared the screen with her niece, Shelley Fabre, in an episode of One Day at a Time in 1975. Furthermore, the two family members appeared together on the April 15, 1975 episode of The Hollywood Squares. Nanette Fabre's career spanned various roles, showcasing her versatility in navigating the television landscape. She not only challenged industry norms, but also contributed to the visibility of sign language on a national platform. In the Mary Tyler Moore show, she played Dottie Richards. In an Emmett Legends interview, she expressed great disappointment at only appearing on two episodes and then not being asked back after that. She was hoping and kind of assuming she would be promoted to a series regular, and she even confronted Mary about it at one point. In the bandwagon, she portrayed Lily Martin. Betty Condon and Adolph Green made the characters played by her, 
and Oscar Levant a married couple because they felt that the audiences would not accept a male-female writing team who weren't married to each other, even though the characters were based on Comden and Green who were not married to each other. During Louisiana Hayride, she gashed her leg when she broke through the top of a prop crate she was standing on. She said that during the later filming of Triplets, standing on her knees was so painful that she had to take large numbers of painkillers. Nanette Fabre, an actress known for her work in entertainment, learned acting from Max Reinhardt, a famous theater teacher. She decided to have surgery to make her nose bigger, which was unusual because most people in the industry get surgery to make their noses smaller. This showed she was unique and didn't follow the usual rules. In 1993, Nanette Fabre got the Women's International Center Living Award for her work. This award showed that she had a big effect on the industry and was still important even after many years. These parts of her life show how Nanette Fabre became an actress. She learned from a famous teacher, made choices that were different, and got recognition for her work. All of this tells the story of someone who stayed true to herself and made a lasting impression on the industry. In the film The Bandwagon, Nanette Fabre portrayed the character Lily Martin brilliantly. The movie was crafted by the talented screenwriters Betty Comden and Adolph Green. Throughout the story, we see parallels between the character Jeffrey and the real-life struggles of famous figures like Jose Fur and Orson Welles in the world of musical production. Nanette Fabre's impact stretches beyond just movies. She rests at Holy Cross Cemetery in Culver City, Ka. She also appeared on the Hollywood Squares, where she stood out by greeting the audience in sign language, showing her diverse talents. In her career, she left a lasting impression on both stage and screen. Her ability to move between different forms of entertainment, along with her warmth, made her beloved by many. Nanette Fabre's influence remains strong, showing her significant role in the arts. Actress Nanette Fabre, known for her roles in classic films, had a notable connection as the aunt of actress Shelley Fabre. In The Bandwagon, she portrayed Lily Martin. Several Arthur Schwartz and Howard Dyatt's numbers, including Sweet Music Sung by Her and Oscar Levant, You Have Everything Danced by Fred Astaire and Sid Sherry's and Got a Brand New Suit Performed by Astaire and Her were deleted from the movie but can be heard on the Rhino soundtrack CD. In her first film, The Private Lives of Elizabeth and Essex, she played Mistress Margaret Radcliffe. This marked the beginning of her film career. These roles showcased her versatility and early involvement in the film industry. Nanette Fabre, a talented artist who struggled with hearing impairment for many years, underwent four operations that successfully restored her ability to hear. Despite facing challenges, she became known for her advocacy work on committees supporting the rights of disabled individuals. She played a crucial role in bringing sign language and captioning to television. Interestingly, she turned down the chance to voice Wilma Flintstone to star in Irving Berlin's Mr. President, a decision that received unfavorable reviews. Due to her petite nose, she was affectionately called No Nose Nanette, a playful reference to the Broadway musical No, No Nanette. Despite facing setbacks, her efforts left a lasting impact. This remarkable individual preferred pursuing opportunities aligned with her passion and her influence extended beyond the entertainment industry. Her story is a testament to resilience and determination.